I, I, I'm actually going to speak about it. I thought I would, there would be a lot more people, but I think this setting actually makes me speak very informally and uh, be able to address things in a more uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, scenario. And one of the key things that we're going to address is what the digital revolution actually has in this whole ecosystem towards monitoring and evaluation. Now, uh, we get to the point straight, and what the government of Sri Lanka is actually embarking on this whole digital journey, which, uh, which is to ensure that every citizen become, is with the device and is able to do their services online on a citizen-centric basis and uh, have their services delivered to them at any time from wherever they are, at whatever time uh, they want, and whenever they want to do it, and however they want to actually have the service delivered. So that's the type of... That's a type of digital inclusion that the government of Sri Lanka is actually bringing in. But while doing this, what happens is that there is a lot of projects that needs to be established. Now, ICTA by itself is doing about 80 odd projects in this whole area, and uh, 80 odd projects has a great impact to the whole entire government service, but also to ensure that the citizens of this country can actually fledge new benefits of that economy itself. Now, I know there is at least a few parliamentarians here, but let's look what Sri Lanka is going to be five years from today. Five years from today. We've come to a world where you're having self-driverless cars, uh, driverless cars, self-driving. That means you don't need drivers. You have cashless payments. You don't need bank counters. You don't need cashiers at uh, shops and uh, many of those. You have drones which are doing delivery. That means you don't need delivery guys and you know the traditional postman and delivery trucks and the entire delivery chain which will change then you have artificial intelligence from great companies like microsoft google amazon and all that which are actually doing machine learning and predicting all the type of uh, events that could happen so statistically uh, statistical points uh, you know how your health is going to be all those type of things you know it's coming from them so you don't need these traditional loan officers, these traditional statisticians who work on some economic figures and gives you all, and all these things are coming very, very automated basis. Then even people might think these are only happening to jobs which are far below on the skill level. But in the, uh, about two months ago, a 747 aircraft was landed by a robot which was put onto a pilot seat and actually navigated the aircraft and landed. So even disruption is happening even in that level. So with all these type of things coming, you have 3D printers which can actually move your garment and get it, uh, so you download the software, you print, and it you know, moves your garment and gives it to you. So that's the type of distributed delivery systems and uh, models that are coming in. So with all these types of services that are coming into the country, people are still in that whole world of saying that you know it's going to be another 20 years. No, 1800 to 1900 was a 100 year life cycle when things changed. 1900 to 1950 was a 50 year life cycle. From 1950 to 2000 was a 25 year life cycle. Now from 2000 till now it's been a 12 and a half year life cycle and now it's coming even to a seven year life cycle. That's the type of life cycle that we're coming. Now in this whole ecosystem where are governments going to be? What are, they, what are they going to deliver to their citizens? And how are these going to be monitored? Are the type of questions that are going to come. There's going to be enough, the existing industry cannot give their jobs, right? So what are the new projects that needs to be rolled out? And if there's new projects rolled out, at what pace at which we are rolling out? So as I told you, you can't wait in the old era of things rolling, you know, saying you're going to finish this in five years or 10 years, People are not going to accept that. And in order to do that, you really need the entire infrastructure in place to make sure that it is collaborative. Because today, individuals are working on a very silos basis. They're working individually rather than actually working together. And we need them to be connected. We need them to be collaborative. And in order to do this, you need to have a digital rollout. And it is very important that we have this digital rollout because it connects people, it connects systems, it's able to make sure that real-time information is shared across and you could actually solve issues and the public wants to know. That is a reality. 
earlier there used to be a belief that you take all your time and do great analysis, get so baseline surveys, get an, uh, reports inside, you're, that's good governance. And you, you think everything's working. But today, citizens are turning around and saying, you wasted so much of time, that's waste of money. And that waste of money means that's not good governance. And that's the type of thing that citizens are actually changing. So how do we get a bridge? And how do we see the graphs actually coming across and pointing to a point which is acceptable by society, but also acceptable by good governance standards? Now, that's the type of model that needs to happen. And to, in order to get that efficiency factor, we need to ensure digital technologies are brought into play. And how do we do that? And that's what the government of Sri Lanka is embarking on. Now, I had a slide. I mean, we had a couple of slides which goes into the projects. I'm not going to talk about it, and I would keep the slides away. But I'm just, I want you to think one aspect is you can never do real good quality evaluation unless you have two factors. One is the people factor where you need to make sure that they are motivated, they basically are part of the project, they, are, uh, you know, they feel that they are contributing to the end cost and that, that whole aspect. Other is that you have the right technological infrastructure for you to actually monitor this whole pro project life cycle. And that has to happen simultaneously. You will have traditional old methodologies which will have to get uplifted and the resistance to change needs to be broken. Today, one of the key factors that are actually, you know, delaying such as, uh, d deliveries are the ability to change. And people want to stick to that. But what, what they don't realize is the damage that they're doing for the future generation. The future generation is that they're moving so far apart, the future generation doesn't even want to actually communicate with them in their old thing. There is less people who want to take the jobs which the previous generation actually did. And that's the type of scenario we have come, and we need to bring the bridge between that. And that's where digital technologies play, play the game in doing that. So if you look at monitoring, when I basically sat with Jagat and Pradeep and all of them, and, and you look at the steps that needs to be evaluated, it's not a big for a particular project. Now, every time I go to a cabinet committee on economic management, which honorable prime minister chairs, there's so much of projects that come. And sometimes you tend to see someone says, no, we are already doing this project. And there's a new one that is being initiated. That's because nobody sees the project list and the projects and at what stages they are in. And that's the reality. So there's a new initiative. Then suddenly, the other party just comes back and says, no, we are doing it. Then the answer goes, ah, he's trying to stop my project. And this becomes an entire sort of a vicious cycle within the system, right? If there's already some projects going in and it can be highlighted and it's all open and you can see the status at which it is in, I think we can solve a lot of people factor as well. So that's, that's the good side of things across. And what does it take? today from software applications. It's a very simple aspect. You can have a software application out there, which you register a project. Once a project is registered, you know. You know who are the team leads for the project, who, uh, who are the other st uh, stakeholders within that project, and at what stages is the project in. And that's it. You have about 20 steps and 20 pointers, and you just show like a, you know, like a train which has crossed every station. You just mark it across and people... So that could be the first stage of project monitoring that can come in. And then subsequently you go down into that particular point and then see what are the set of activities that needs to be, uh, have been completed or where is it stuck. And then the political leadership can actually look at that particular core issue and then say, call the parties and say, how can we solve it for you? So it's, it's very important that this project monitoring and evaluation is actually established in a more pro, a proactive, uh, more collaborative, as well as a more, uh, more open and transparent manner, which the public also could see. And that's, that's the key. Because as much as heads of political leaderships and heads at government institutions may want to push the project, People have the power, and if the people could push, 
And people, because people see they are the ultimate stakeholder. I might be interested in one particular. So I would put all my pressure to ensure that it is done. And the people power would bring in an entire ecosystem towards a successful completion of a project rather than actually being blocked and get stuck. And one other aspect that you also got to realize in this entire technological world, if we don't deliver something within a specific time period, that project is dead and gone. Forget it. People don't want it. Right. So if we take Sri Lanka five, ten years ago and said, OK, we're going to have a portal, we're going to have a website, and you can go to the website and apply for yourself. Today, people will say, I don't want to go to a website. Get me a mobile app, which basically, and I want to use it on my mobile phone, not on my, on my computer device. So if you started a project then and your, your entire delivery was for a website on a traditional machine, it is no longer relevant. So you've got to make sure that there is a phase in which that you need to deliver. And this phase is actually becoming shorter and shorter. Now, you can't have any more saying, you know, we'll deliver something in five years. People want something in two years, a year. They want delivery. They want to see it. They want to use it. And then they want to abandon it and then go on to the next one. And that's the type of consumption cycles that have actually been built. So it's important for parliamentarians, but also others in this room, to realize that they need to work faster but also be more transparent, and also to be able to point key activities which can be easily understood by many and make sure that these are available to everybody in the country who could see it. And even donor agencies and all that would have a greater uh, impact uh, on this. So that's where I'm going to end it. But I want to actually tell, uh, mention, so people may ask and members of parliament may ask, the government of Sri Lanka is just embarked on an amazing project, which is the Lanka Government Network 2.0, connecting 860 locations up to 100 Mbps, and everyone will have uh, it will be available with Wi-Fi. And if you have a username, whether I'm in the Ministry of State Enterprises or whether I come to ICTA, I can just use my same username across the whole of government in any location. The first is 860 locations, but we are actually linking up to 3,500 locations across the whole of government. Along with that comes video conferencing, where communication can be done through video conferencing, and we are doing 100 um, 100, uh, minist uh, 150, sorry, 100 locations in the stage one, and the tender has just been published. So we should have it within the next four or five months. It should be actually rolled out. So that would enable ministers to be able to speak to this, uh, secretaries to be able to speak to other members, and you can have a collaborative environment rather than moving places, which makes it much more efficient. The third is a complete document sharing uh, platform for the whole of government, along with entire mail systems and all that, but a document sharing platform so documents can be shared and uh, you could go ahead on that particular. Now, this would be the first phase in which you give connectivity to everybody inside government. And uh, we want members inside governments, uh, uh, civil servants, all to move away from desktops to laptops so that they can, it is more mobile and even if they have tablet devices, they can carry it around and they can still be connected to entire systems. Now, one of the key issues that we faced in implementing a lot of uh, software applications and a lot of software systems is because people would want servers and all that and then they'd say they don't have an IT person inside their office and uh, and there's no one to manage it. But the government is actually implementing a national cloud, which is already uh, awarded and it's on the face, so that all, this, uh, all the applications will be centrally installed and uh, no one needs to manage it. There's a central management available for it as well, so that it makes it very easy for institutions to focus on their core activities rather than running IT companies. So that's the type of environment that we're building and there is a lot more that is going in and we want to also get the payment uh, factor which is you know everything can be done but that last stage unless you have an international credit card like master visa uh, things you cannot make payment online so we're working on this whole aspects with other banks and all that to come with a localized payment product so that every citizen will have a payment ability to make payments like the easy cash and many others that can come in so those are the type of things that the uh, ICTA has embarked on, and we will have a lot more coming to you all, but we just want you all to focus more on the evaluation as this is the subject for the rest of the day. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.